what's up, guys? Norchetto here. Thanks for stopping in. And welcome to my post-Atlanta homestand weekend video! <laughs> it's it's going to be great. I'm telling you. It was great. So, this past weekend was the Atlanta homestand weekend at the uh, the Cobb Energy and Performing Arts Center. It was, it was so good. It was so good. I cannot stress how much fun and, and how well everything went this past weekend. It... Uh, Makes me so happy to see OWL in Atlanta. Um, it made me happy to see all the the players and, and talent and all the organizational folks just in town getting all this together. It was, it was truly, truly a magical time. But, I mean, just, just starting from when we showed up, just standing in line outside the venue. They had uh, uh, banners plastered on the outside with the players and everything. There's multiple lines for, you know, uh, VIP tickets and things like that. Got their own special line. People were handing out uh frozen cokes there was food trucks there was a, a bud light uh tent set up you know sponsorship and um you know when you got inside there was uh even more just just uh logos everywhere there was a giant um like routed metal light up atlanta rain logo that, that uh cox had made for the event that was was so cool looking um and kind of the way that the the venue was set up was you walk in and there was you know security checks metal detectors huge banner uh, announcing the weekend right when you enter and uh kind of a small merch station um concessions things like that and then you could either go into the auditorium, which was um, multiple levels high, uh, or you could go over to uh, a different auditorium where they had the talent set up uh, completely separated from the the stage where all the players were, were going to be playing, where we were all watching. Um, but that's where you had things like uh, the much bigger merch store. You had um, kind of the, the Bud Light uh, um, stations, which which I'll get into that. Coke was giving away some free stuff. But um, so, yeah, there was there was multiple sections of the venue for different things it really helped keep um congestion down in certain areas of the building now there's one area outside of the main auditorium uh, at the bottom of the stairs that went up multiple levels that was the main thoroughfare for everyone um it was uh um, the, the stairs that's how you got upstairs to the, like the vip and press areas uh, were, were the stairs they went um all that stuff was on the top floor um so anytime a player really needed to go up and do an interview or or go up and uh find seats in different ways uh yeah they would walk through this little area so just kind of hanging out in this little lobby area next to this uh this light up rain logo you could pretty much interact with every player that came through every uh caster every desk personality just everyone would walk through this little area it was it was so great and that was another thing the availability of the um of the talent of the the you know the production staff and the, the team's organization and stuff was amazing you you i know there were signing events which would guarantee that you got some of your stuff signed and you got to meet to play meet the players and ask questions and stuff but just being around the venue you, you were almost guaranteed to run into at least some notable people so uh, i know day one i was standing in the lobby area Area and look up and literally Defran is standing like two feet away from me. No one's really bothering. No one really notices he's there yet. And um, it was really surreal. It was just it was just a really surreal experience. So yeah, uh, we we get there on Saturday. Um, get through security checks and go immediately to the merch station to pick up one of these these amazing Atlanta Rain baseball shirts. And we had gotten into the line. Um, probably about 45 minutes early wanted to definitely want to get an early start on everything and immediately jumped in the merch line uh when we got into the venue and i still got the second to last shirt from one of the merch booths i uh, i heard a rumor i do not know if this is true but i heard that there were less than 100 of these jerseys actually produced like very very limited run now do i think they will have more of these in the future I would think so. These these were such a hit that it would really really surprise me if um if it was limited to, to just this one event. Now, one thing that was really cool was the uh the the Bud Light stations, which the, the little sponsor stations in the uh the auxiliary auditorium had um a section where you could actually I don't know if you can get hit this here would uh put a patch on either your jersey or your your shirt, pretty much whatever you brought them uh specifically to show off that you were at the homestand weekend so yeah that right there it's uh it was really cool it was it was really cool to provide that little bit of extra but as far as the shirts go like 
these this is this is really nice. This is probably one of my favorite articles of clothing at this point. Really well made. Um and very well received. I know a lot of people I got offered uh um money for this after the event because people wanted these shirts so bad. So you guys knocked that out of the park making this one. Um, and I, I just really hope more people have an opportunity to get this shirt. Uh, I expect to see designs like this for other teams popping up with how great this idea was from the Atlanta rain. And uh, yeah, yeah. I hope you guys get a chance to get one because, because these things are great. One thing I do want to uh, point out is the biggest difference I noticed between the Dallas homestand and the Atlanta homestand, which is that the, um, I heard someone describe the venue in Dallas as as cavernous, like a, a cavernous, uh, a big open auditorium. And uh, as they say, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. So yes, the auditorium or the venue in Texas did seem bigger, but the the venue in Atlanta was was much more uh, of a theater feel. Like it it anywhere any seat in the house felt like a, a great uh, viewpoint. You could see everything going on. Um, it, the, the sound was very well balanced and that place got loud. That place got really loud. I actually talked to several people at the event who had been to the Dallas homestand that said that like that was great and it would get loud, but the way that, that the sound echoed around and kind of focused uh, on the stage and, and throughout the venue was unlike anything they'd experienced. So, so the venue choice was great. Um, I don't, think this is going to be uh, necessarily what we see next year going into the home games. Uh, I expect them to maybe try out a, a few other venues. Now, I, I might be wrong. Now, this is a pretty big venue, um, so I would expect maybe this for, for bigger games or, or playoffs if they make it to Atlanta or anything like that, but um, it, it was it was such a great venue for uh, for bigger events like that. So, uh, so yeah, like the Cobb Energy Center, great choice for a venue. Um, some of the things I, I, I did want to point out uh, specifically about the people I got to meet, um, I got to meet, you know, obviously uh, people from the royal family that uh, have, have always you know welcomed me up there, accepted me with open arms and uh, um, really made the event something magical, being able to, to just spend it with with good friends from the community. Um, I also got to meet uh, besides the team, which we'll, we'll get into the team, but uh, the the partners with the team like Fran, uh, I got to meet her and she was she was phenomenal. Actually, uh, I tapped on her shoulder and I asked her if, if you know, I could shake her hand and, and introduce myself. And she just looked at me and went, I recognize you, which that that alone just blew me away. But uh, apparently just um, through the organization, she had been shown my videos and for her to recognize me from that was just uh, it. it really validated so many things and and just it just warmed my heart warmed my heart but fran was fran was absolutely phenomenal she did a lot of work with golden boy this weekend and i think she did uh, a really good job being in in front of camera like hosting um she said it was different than uh streaming on twitch but it was something she did really enjoy so i expect and, and hope to see fran doing more of that stuff for the league um Golden Boy, yeah, I got to interact with him. He's he's always um, just a character when it comes to interacting with fans. Uh, he's when he's not on, he's always kind of you know just bantering back and forth with people, having a good time. Um, uh, again, rock star of esports, so happy to have him at the event. Um, now the talent desk, those guys are stole, stone cold professionals. They would uh, they were in the auxiliary auditorium and. Um, they wouldn't really look at anyone because, you know, when you make eye contact with a fan or something, it, it makes this little moment where you kind of feel like you need to interact with them, break away, things like that. But they did their best to really focus on what they were doing. I mean, they were working. This is, this is their job. And, and you know, I, I cannot fault them for that. But in between... When they did have a moment, I, I know all of them took a moment to come down and talk to the fans. Uh, I didn't get a chance to, to speak with all of, the, all of them at the event. Uh, I did get to talk to Sideshow. Um, my wife got to talk to Zoe, and, and it was um, they, were, they were such nice people, at, at least to the fans in between. So, so Sideshow. So Sideshow uh, bet against Atlanta all weekend. Uh, he even uh, had a, a uh, went up against Zoe in a fruit eating contest in support of the Florida Mayhem and cheated. And he cheated. It, sideshow's canceled. So Sideshow is canceled. Zoe is our Queen Peach of Atlanta, and that's just that's just the way it is. Um, as far as meeting the team went, uh, that was um, 
that that was a surreal experience as someone who has been kind of following these guys careers for a while now and and making news about them to actually finally get to to shake their hands and say hello and and for some of them to recognize me and you know hey Nocheto, how's it going man and and uh see that it was it was again just super surreal um i know that that uh, uh masa and inlayer and and dogman and and danny and uh, Sefi, all all of them were really excited to see me, and uh, really excited to see a bunch of different fans. I know that um, they really wanted to go out of their way to interact with fans. I, I talked to a couple of them directly that straight up said that the fan experience this weekend was unexpected. They expected that they had fans. They expected that people would be there supporting them, but the amount of support they got and how many people were so excited to meet them and the the energy the crowd gave them throughout was just something that that was something they didn't expect, and that was something that really blew them away. And I think we uh, we really made a, a great weekend for them as as much as they made one for us. So so that was really cool. And um, yeah, I got to I got to meet all of the every every member of the team. Well, excuse me. So silence was was not there. Uh, he, he wasn't, uh, JP, just Justin Patry was, was also not there. I, I missed, missed my dude there. Um, but besides that, like everybody walked through, Danny had gotten flown out. So that was really cool to, to get to meet Danny. I'm glad he was there. Um, it was a little tougher to meet some of the players than others. I know people like Dogman and, and baby Bay were being interviewed a lot. And the, the, um, about the third floor press area, uh, that's where the press area was and, and there's desks set up and uh, the players would spend a lot of time there, especially post match when they had to get their interviews done. But, um, I was fortunate enough to, to, uh, get, um, coach, uh, Brad Seffi to, to, uh, really help me and my wife out, uh, making sure to meet all the team. He made sure that we got to meet baby Bay. My, my wife really wanted to meet baby Bay and, uh, she only stayed there for Saturday. So, so Seffi made that happen. And, um, I'm going to throw this up here. This, this is a picture of my wife meeting baby bay and um if if it looks like she's about to just spontaneously combust it's because she absolutely is uh she was so excited to 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 meet him and she's a wonderful woman i love her so <laughs> um and uh, uh speaking speaking of my my wife meeting people she uh she did get a chance to meet pokepo as well and i'd like to reach out and apologize directly to you pokepo um we did not realize you were eating a sandwich at the time Kasaurus is the one who said that you would totally take a picture with us and took the sandwich from you. I would not have made you take a picture mid bite. I am so sorry. So if you see this picture, the reason he looks like that is because Kasaurus totally told him to take a picture with us uh, while he had a bite of sandwich in his mouth. So, dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's on Cass. That's on Cass. Um, but yeah, it, it just the availability of all the team was was uh, fantastic, and uh, uh, the one uh, group that was a little bit harder to track down was the the casters because they had their own kind of special area. You'd just see them kind of traversing back and forth from time to time. But my, the craziest story was um, I was going up uh, up a couple flights of stairs to to get to our seats, and as I'm going up the stairs, I kind of glance over and there's Uber. Uber's just walking up the stairs with me and we have a nice little casual conversation going up the stairs and, and I ask him about the noise level and stuff. And, and he was the one that told me it was crazy as compared to, you know, some of the other events he had done, but that, um, but it was going really well. And yeah, if, if you guys have never been to an event like that, I, I urge you so much to do everything you can to make it next year when the team comes home, it's, it's going to be amazing and and uh, i really want everyone to experience that so so everything you can do to make it home uh, i want to uh i want to try and help people make it to these games i want everyone to be able to experience the the things that um that me and, and a bunch of other people this weekend were able to experience um uh, as far as the actual games go, uh, they they went really well. We really needed this weekend, so we uh, we only dropped one map over both days. We lost one map to the Toronto Defiant. It was Volskaya, and uh, we we kind of got rolled uh, by by that cheese comp between um, uh, you know Logics and, and and Gods. It it was it was really really rough. Um, but besides that one drop map, we we steamrolled it we uh got our map differential up to being completely even uh and we got ourselves uh above that red line we are now uh 11th in the league which is above that play-in spot for these uh the uh, season playoffs so 
if we can turn this around and keep winning going forward, then guys, we're going to go to the playoffs. I really feel like we're going to the playoffs with with the uh, turnaround. Uh, stage three for the Atlanta Reign was the hardest stage for any team this season. Poss- possibly last season too, but definitely for this season. It was unbelievably difficult, and the guys did a great job, all things considered. A lot of those games were a lot closer than they seemed, especially the ones versus uh, uh, Vancouver and, and San Francisco, the the top-tier teams. We still gave them a run for their money, and uh, with um, the rumored 2-2-2 two, two, two lock on the uh, horizon for, for Stage 4, uh, I think this is going to really give us an opportunity to um, yeah, flex some of that talent we have. I mean, between between our DPS players, I mean, Erster and Inlayer and Baby, oh my god, it's 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 going to be absolutely huge going into stage 4. I'm I'm so pumped for this. But um that was not the only games that were played. We also got to see Baby Bay and Bren face off in a uh, Widow 1v1, which was Absolutely a horrifying experience uh, seeing Bryn wearing those widow leggings. It's just awful, awful. But um, no, Baby Bay just toyed with him. He toyed with him. I, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Bren. Bren, I think, got one legit kill. And I think he got maybe two or three actual dinks. He he hit good headshots, but they weren't fully charged. And that's what uh, that's what kind of gave it to Baby Bay. But Baby Bay's shots that he landed seemed effortless and like he was just toying with him and um i had i actually heard a really funny story regarding baby bay in this uh uh the bren 1v1 where he um when he was told you know defran was going to be doing the hammer 1v1 with mangachu um baby bay was going to be going 1v1 with bren he just kind of went yeah, but what if I lose? And everybody's like, no, you're not going to lose, man. You're not going to lose. Obviously, you're not going to lose and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, but what if I do? And that, that was just, I mean, I can only imagine um, being in that position. And so, yeah, no judgment whatsoever, baby bae. That was, that's, I think that's what everyone would be going through. But obviously, you nailed it, man. You you, you took out the Brito maker. And, um, and he was the second talent member person on the talent crew to be very mean to our uh, our Georgia fans so uh both sideshow and Brenner canceled at this point so you're still awesome um but yeah it was it was uh it was really fun to have those 1v1 events the the torb 1v1 with uh Defran versus Mangachu was um way way more exciting than I actually thought a lot of people maybe thought it was going to be I was concerned that if these guys took it too seriously there'd be a lot of hiding and it'd kind of get dragged on but no they went Mangachu into Fran jumped in the middle they they went head to head had a great time with it our dude did lose he had to to concede to Mangachu being the the OG hammer but um I think I think they both had a really 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 fun time uh I know that uh Defran hates to lose, so uh, there's at least one person that was really upset that that we lost that. But uh, Defran, he seemed so happy all weekend. He seemed like he had so much fun meeting the fans. Uh, and that where he w- uh, that that part where he walked out uh, with the team in the the Phoenix mascot costume and took the head off. That was it. It was exactly the kind of of goofy stunt that caught people off guard that I want to see way more of that's the personality of the team and the players coming out and that's that's the stuff that I really want us to lean into that like just kind of goofy personality filled uh uh, thing that can really flex the player personality you know um, I loved getting to see Kodak walk out with the the state flag the Georgia state flag with the rain logo in it that was a just a wonderful touch wonderful touch um but uh yeah more of that more of that kind of stuff and, and like this is just has huge huge implications on on home games and um that this is something that people really want this isn't something that people went to because hey it's in town you know it'll be the same as seeing it at home but i guess i'll show up this is something people were really really excited for this is something that people want more of and i I think this bodes really, really well for home games next year. So uh, keep an eye out for for tickets next year. Uh, I I want I want season tickets. I want to go to all of them. I'll I'll go to as many of them as I can, but I want to go to all of them. But um, yeah, it's it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be phenomenal. But the party did not stop at the venue. We actually had uh, two 
after parties. The the first one on Saturday night at Battle and Brew was hosted by the royal family, um, and Battle and Brew is always a a wonderful venue. Uh, the wonderful partners for the the royal family, and they they've uh, held events for the rain before. Um, it was it's all it's always uh, it's a great place to really. Um, let loose it's it's a bar environment a lot of uh a lot of close quarters close spaces places where you kind of gotta you know find someone and kind of uh find a place if you want to hang out and talk and it, it kind of makes you uh, uh lean in and connect with people more because you know you're having to not just have a casual conversation you have to commit to that conversation they had computers set up so we got to see the players uh play different games they played some overwatch it's really funny i actually got to see um uh, daco and uh, Nick Dallas play on the Battle and Brew local accounts, and that's just for people you know come in, want to pay some money and and play. That if you want to play there, you got to play on one of their accounts. So I'm expecting these are probably ranked like silver ish somewhere around there. And to see Daco going in and just absolutely demolishing people and getting called an aimbotter for just well, I mean he is he's Daco, so whatever. Um, it, it was it was hilarious, and uh, got to see Fried played some uh, uh, team fight tactics, which I did find out. I talked to Dong Min this weekend. I found out that uh, Dota Dota Underlords is trash, and I need to stop playing that and playing team fight tactics. So thank you, Dong Min, for that. I will. Uh, I, I have jumped on that, and uh, I'll, I will let you know my my progress on that. Um, the second after party was hosted by the Rain. Um, at uh, main event, which is, it, it's kind of like a, a huge arcade area. They have you know a bunch of games and stuff, a bar, um, uh, food obviously in there, pool tables, bowling alley, laser tag, like a a rope obstacle course thing, and and that was also just it was very different than Battle and Brew, a very different energy, but it was really great for for. Um, just allowing people to have a really good time. Uh, I know I saw multiple teams bowling. I saw the uh, talent crew and some of the teams going in and playing laser tag against each other. I got to um, I got to run the rope course, the obstacle course with uh, um, a few fans and and Eric from the rain. He was up there with me. Uh, we got to see Puckett do the the obstacle course and Golden Boy do it. And um, it it was it was. It's just a great time. I, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Eric and Paul, uh, the uh, owner and GM of the team, for um, just everything they did for me this weekend. Uh, it was um, it, it was just a great time. I, I got to uh, meet more people than uh, I was probably going to, thanks to those guys. I got to um, spend some time just hanging out and talking with uh, um, you know the people who make this league what it is and and uh that was thanks to the kindness of the the organization and the the people who really want to make the fan experience and this this whole experience work for us and work for for esports so um so yeah uh, uh big big shout out to those guys thanks uh, uh jeremy for everything you did for me this weekend uh nabil uh god Blitz, Leo, Bear, uh, Ryan, Sykora, Caleb, uh, Zoe, Modelo, all of you guys, uh, Ethan, Kate, Darby, uh, Shy Guy, just too many people. I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't even go over your name. You, you guys all made this uh, an absolutely phenomenal weekend for me, and um, I, I can't wait to see all of you guys next time. So. Uh, so you guys, that was the that was the homestand weekend. I know this was uh, this got a little long, but. It was definitely going to, um, and yeah, I, I can't wait to see us uh, sweep stage four and make it to the playoffs. Hopefully, I'll uh, I'll be able to see you guys there. But until then. Mm -hmm.